This boat has become more and more interesting to me, especially if I can get it for a cheap price. So this one smells like something died in it and it's full of water. Two 9.9 .9 outboards which look like two strokes. Battery bank actually works but it's full of water. This hatch is leaking. The bilge is all full. Oh, and it really smells really bad. It's all about the price. All about the price. What's up, Pedders? Push this back. Yes. <laughs> ah. It's nice to be back. Nice to be back, yeah, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> nice to be back in the digital realm of uh, YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so nice to have you. We need to take Hushka to an appointment. Got a tattoo and a piercing to do. Tattoo and a piercing, yeah, and then we head to Amsterdam. No? Yep. So while you've been doing this tattooing, I've been researching <sighs> this boat that we're going to go and see. Mm -hmm. I'm super excited. Yeah, but like, Warren looks nice. Have a yeah. catamaran. around. would be awesome. Just fingers crossed it's not rotten. If it's not, then we're all good. It'll be a nice adventure anyway. Look at my back wheel. <laughs> So I am parked on an angle, so it's making it look worse, but it's pretty bad. I don't think it's getting worse. Hushka and I came to Amsterdam uh -huh. to look at boats, didn't we? We did. And only boats. <laughs> oh, you are you allowed to film? Uh, you are not sure. And your, your viewers don't want to see something like that. No, 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 no. no. We're like proper people with proper interests. Anyway, we're here for the boats and the culture. That's that is it. all. Yeah. That's Nothing it. Nothing else. Nothing else. No distractions, no red light districts. No peep shows. No peep shows. That's quite cheap. That is a cheap peep show. So. No. <laughs> no. Two euros for a peep show. You could say that was a cheap peep. <laughs> cheap peep. <laughs> okay, so we just went to meet the owner <laughs> and then we picked up this little skiff which is on the top of the car. <laughs> Uh, so we've come down here, the boat is just anchored just over there and we've no idea what the situ what the state of it's going to be in. Uh -huh. But it's very cheap, probably for a reason. Expectations are low. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I think we're going to maybe not use the boat which is on the car and just temporarily steal this. And look, they have oars here. <laughs> Nice one. You couldn't make this up. It has, yeah, it has engines. There she is. The 
what, Trace? Trace you. <laughs> <laughs> Flooded bad Trace. <laughs> It's full, 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 full. Solid. Yeah, it's, it's just like getting the getting the water out and see where. Obviously, there's obviously loads of leaks coming from up here. Mm. I tasted the water and it's fresh, but we might be on fresh water. I think we probably are on fresh water. Aren't we? I would say so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Mm. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, taking the water out wouldn't be a big thing. Like we just come back with a bilge pump and a car battery. Yeah. Be the first step. Yeah. Cover up holes. And everything else is cleaning. Like, I mean, of course, these parts are a bit rotten, but uh, the important parts aren't. The beams are all pretty good. Yeah. yeah. It's just like, has that water done damage to it already? The hull, you mean? Below, yeah, below the water line. So again, just like with the Colin Archer, much bigger project than I expected, but uh, I think this is going to be an incredibly cheap boat, and I reckon everyone's screaming, don't buy this boat. Anyway, before I would even consider buying it, we need to like check out the area. We've already spoken to the marina next to it. Yeah, I guess the idea is, can we lift it out for a good price? Can we store it for a good price? And can I, can I work on the boat how I want to, because if it's a super super duper cheap boat I'll have a bit of money to work on it it's just having that security of a place so there's another marina over there we're gonna go speak to them see if they can lift the marina's close by they didn't have any lifting facilities or space for that boat so I'm gonna oh, there is a professional yard that deals with catamarans so well, I'll ask those I'll speak to Hanukkah as well and uh, cannot say exactly how much the boat is because I don't know but it could just be a few thousand pounds not even that, who knows We found the most attractive lady in Amsterdam on the red light district You never get the chance to get that close to herons they're really very uh, skittish. This one's not skittish. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> So 
strange. Yeah, it's shorter. Mm. Minky was a 38, really. And it's a sloop. It's not. So we came to this yard, uh, which Hanukkah has suggested. But I, I need to send the guy an email to get prices of the place. So I'll send an email. See how much it is to keep that boat here. He said, there's got, he said they've got space and they can lift it out. It's just going to be up to the price, I think. But yeah, uh, would be a pretty cool place to to work on a boat. I'm back on the boat on the Pahi 42. Said goodbye to Hushka. Uh, he's gone off to work doing his tattoos in Stuttgart in Germany. But it's been a nice few days with Hushka, and we've just been thinking a lot about this boat. And I've been speaking to Hanukkah. I just got off a video call with Hanukkah. If you watch the channel and you know about Warm Catamarans, you'll know she's built many of these boats. This boat has become more and more interesting to me, especially if I can get it for a cheap price. So I'm still negotiating, or I'm negotiating with the owner now. Still need to hear back from him. Um, he did want 8,000 euros, but it is more of a project than I was thinking. So, so I'm gonna put in a really, really low offer and see, because it is a lot of work and it's gonna cost a lot of money. So if I can get it for cheap, then I can, you know, it'll offset the cost of the initial boatyard costs. So need to talk a little bit about the price with the owner first. And then what I'll do is I'll just start getting a lot of the water out of it, start sealing up holes, and then come in with a proper battle plan, try and get a few people together. And yeah, first step would just be to clean this thing up and really thoroughly check it. So this one smells like something died in it and it's full of water. So there's not been a hatch over this. These little holes here are actually self-draining, which is weird, but I think some birds have tried to nest and there was a rotten egg there. <laughs> so, big hatch. So you've got engine controls there. Two 9.9 .9 outboards, which look like two strokes. Uh, I pulled the cord on that one and it's, it turns over. That one was in gear, so I couldn't turn it over. So I'll do that later. So these steps take you down and then the bilges are full. Oh, and it really smells really bad. Like something actually died in here. So yeah, bah. could be the milk there. Surely not, could be. So all the hatches need redoing. This one's just got two screws in the top. Most of the windows are like that, so that's allowed water to come in here. But what Hanukkah said that, because it's been painted really well and covered really well, there's a good chance that it's not got damp. So I need to clear out this water to check if there's any damp down there. Uh, battery bank actually works, but it's full of water. Again, all the these are full, so I need to check the fiberglass under it. Uh, some of the roof has been taken out, uh, this bit, and yeah, this is the worst bit. On the on deck, it's all kind of green. But I've shown all this to Hanukkah, and she said it's not too bad. It's just the foam's been cut out, and I guess needs replacing. 
that feels quite damp but the solar panel thing is leaking so that's a solar panel slash hatch and that's definitely getting some moisture inside this hatch is leaking so the beams are actually apparently in good condition from my guided inspection from Hanukkah so there's no cracking in the fiberglass which means there's no moisture that's got into the wood there and I think not a lot of the moisture has actually got into the wood it's just around the hatches uh, this this appears full of water but actually that's just the water level so they are for dagger boards the, uh, the deck here is soft and this should be closed that's just full of water in there this closed hatch uh, one of the only closed ones fully is completely dry and in good condition Inside this hole, more water. Um, so, this I guess is a little galley area, uh, windows kind of leaking. So, the fillets and everything are well done, it's actually been really well made. Hanukkah says uh, you can tell it's been well made well. So yeah, in here, this is the better condition hull. Um, water, water in every build compartment in here. Uh, there you go. There you go. And this is the main bedroom so yeah one concerning thing here to the left is these are the holes for the chain plates and they were not covered so I need to, I need to check if the um, damp and rotten inside there for, uh, but if not that could be quite a big repair because that's the main or one of the main bulkheads this is the main bedroom. This is the, uh, the electronics panel. So actually the bilge pump works, but well, the bilge pump turns on. The batteries are connected, because so I can turn it on. I can turn the bilge pump on. So it turns on, but it doesn't work. So here's basically what the deal is. I, I can imagine myself on this boat, in this place, doing, refitting this boat over the next say year or something. And I think it's a really, really good place for me to do it. So close to back to England. I could even take those outboard motors back in my car and service them at home. I guess a lot of it depends on the price to get the boat lifted in the yard in Amsterdam, which I know is gonna be expensive. So again, that depends on the price that I can get the boat for. I'd like to get it for 2,000 euros. Subject to a survey, which would be my own survey, which I just basically empty all the water out to see if there's any more water coming in. If all that checks out, then it's fine. I'll spend the next few days sealing up the boat and so that no more water gets in. Then I'll drive back to the UK regather, recalibrate and then come back here some extra tools some pumps uh, a battery bank a proper inverter battery bank and maybe some people as well so we can have a good time and clean this thing up yeah so that's the plan for now so back to living in my car there's no way I'm going to live here it's so moist and damp and horrible and this is a proper project proper project it's all about the price all about the price
found this boat and it's sinking. <laughs> I think this is the boat that comes with it. Uh, I think it comes with it. So some things I didn't mention as well about this boat is that it was built in 1997 and it was only launched in 2010. So it's been kind of sitting for the last, well, I think eight years in that anchorage, gathering rainwater. <laughs> you know, it's not a super old one. It was, it was built reasonably recently. Anyway, you'll have to find out next week how all this pans out and what on earth is gonna happen. It's gonna be interesting in the comment section in this one. I am super apprehensive and super nervous about that, but um, like I just said at the end there, I can see myself doing this project and I have good feelings about it, more so than I have done really about anything else. So thank you so much to everyone who went to my coffee, PayPal, gave me a one-off PayPal, uh, your name's coming up on the screen. I can't tell you how much it means to me um your, your guys' generosity and to everyone who just watches the videos like subscribes and all that good stuff supports me 